Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Valentino. This one is called Valentino Uomo Noir Absolu. So make sure to stay tuned. This is a fragrance that was released in 2017 and this is in a collection of its own. I know the original was released in 2014 and that one was composed by Olivier Polge. So this one is not the recent release from this company. So in 2019, which is the year in which this video is being filmed, uh, the uh, newest release is Born in Roma. And so this came out actually two years ago. So there have been several flankers. Of course, there's been an intense version as well. You know that this is the Noir Absolute absolute version because it's in a black bottle with a gold label on the front. Now I know the thing about the 2014 version that people really enjoyed was the use of the iris note. Iris is an ingredient that can actually come across smelling a little bit like lipstick and it's also what I think warranted a lot of the comparisons between that and Dior Um, both of which were made by Olivier Polge. I know the recent formulation of Dior Um is by Francois de Machy, but originally he did have his hand in that fragrance and also the 2014 release from this house. Now the 2017 release here actually deviates from that original note breakdown. It has notes like sandalwood, a lot of incense, a frankincense from what I remember, a black pepper, and so it's a rather spicy, cinnamony, peppery, but rather sweet, smooth, silky, and creamy composition on account of the use of the note of sandalwood. I'm excited to tell you what I think. Let's start things off with the presentation. I do apologize because I don't have a box for this fragrance. I just have the bottle, but the bottle for this one is rather nice looking. It just has this studded design on the front and all around the perimeter of the bottle, and it mimics the older uh, Valentino Uomo releases. So if you've seen one, you've seen them all. The only change here is the fact that it's in a black bottle with a gold plate on the front and a gold uh, crimped on neck, I suppose. On the bottom of the bottle, you will see the information printed on there if you're looking to authenticate your purchase. And this fragrance also has a built-in atomizer and the distribution is nice and wide. Let's continue with the smell. Now, as soon as this fragrance opens up, Despite the fact that when you look at the note breakdown, there's no mention of the note of iris, I actually still pick up on a little bit of iris and I'm given to feel like it's the backbone of this fragrance. What I get from this one mostly is this note of sandalwood. Now I know sandalwood has a lower volatility, it's actually a base note, but I get it quite strongly in the opening of this fragrance. I also get a nice touch of that cinnamon in there as well, and I think that that's what allows this fragrance to veer into a sweet oriental, I wouldn't say gourmand territory, but definitely oriental territory. Now I know there's frankincense and black pepper and incense according to Fragrance but I personally don't get a smoking nuance from this fragrance. I've certainly smelled a lot of other both designer and niche fragrances that come across smelling rather smoky and dark and leathery. Gucci Guilty Absolute is one of them, but this one, Valentino Uomo Noir Absolute, it's certainly not a fragrance that veers in that territory. Mostly what I get, like I said, is this sandalwood note. It's a little spicy and it is a strong deviation from the original, which kind of brings me to my next point. If somebody is a fan of the original and they were to ask me for my recommendation as to whether or not they should purchase this one, I would not say go out there and purchase this one based off the mere fact that you like the original. There's way too much of a difference between the two. However, if somebody said that the original was a little too soft or too subtle or too floral for them, I would say definitely check this one out because it is markedly different. If somebody was a fan of perhaps say something like Tom Ford's Black Orchid because they like the presence of the incense and the vanilla and the truffle note and how dark it is and how, how strong it is in terms of its projection and lasting power, I feel as though this is the more masculine alternative to that. Now, of course, that's not to say that this smells like Black Orchid. However, a part of me wants to say that they do fulfill the same occasions and the same uh, you know, wearing scenarios, but inevitably this is its own scent and I do find this to be a unique 
fragrance. Now the thing about sandalwood and the thing that characterizes the olfactory profile of the note of sandalwood is that it smells rather creamy and there is a subtle sweetness to it. Now I'm not inclined to say that this fragrance is sweet. Like I said earlier on in the review, I wouldn't classify this as a gourmand. I do think that there are some other iris based fragrances that can lean in sweeter territory. Some that I've actually smelled that are partnered up with the note of coffee and so it's kind of like a coffee vanilla iris thing going on in there which I find to be rather interesting interesting. In the case of this fragrance, however, I do think that there's a little bit of iris in there, but it's way in the back and it's mostly about the cinnamon and the sandalwood and some incensey notes that don't necessarily come across smelling smoky. Let's finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell and I do find this to be a unique fragrance. There isn't really a fragrance out there that I can quite compare this one to. And I do find this one in terms of the, its overall olfactory profile, I find it to be a little bit more daring than other fragrance releases nowadays. Obviously it's not an aqua, it's not a blue fragrance, it's not something light and citrusy and aquatic and ozonic or anything like that. It is rather on the dark side and of course noir is in the name so that kind of conveys a little bit of how dark it uh, is presumed to be. But I do find this one to be very appealing and very approachable. And despite the fact that it's a little bit in challenging territory, I don't think that it's hard to wear, especially if you apply a bit more conservatively, maybe two or three sprays, you put on another layer. I think you're still going to get noticed, but you're certainly not going to choke anybody out. You're not going to offend anybody. The overall smell, as far as my nose thinks so, uh, it's incredibly pleasant and I really love smelling this one. Longevity on this one is about seven to eight hours. So despite the fact that it's quite strong, uh, the longevity is above average, but I wouldn't say it's beast mode. And then in terms of the performance in, in the projection category, I think the projection on this one is really good for the first two to two and a half hours. And then it became a skin scent right around that six and a half hour mark, but performance is very good. In terms of the versatility on this one, I don't find it to be all that versatile in the regard that I see myself wearing this one in the colder weather. And I think this is more of like a dressed up sort of a scent. I think when I'm wearing something casually, I just want to feel refreshed and rejuvenated. So I'm more inclined to wear something that's lighter and more ozonic and more citrusy and perhaps even aquatic. And this is definitely not any of those things. So I would consider this to be a bit more of like a dressed up scent. And then last up in terms of the presentation, I always enjoyed the presentation of Valentino Uomo fragrances. Of course, I think there are some fragrances out there that can come across uh, looking a little bit kitschy in terms of the presentation and how it's done. I never thought that to be the case with Valentino fragrances, however. My final verdict on this one is, if you're a fan of Valentino Uomo fragrances, this is one that is not a blind buy just because it is a strong deviation from their previous releases. However, I see that the reception for Born in Roma has been a bit lackluster because it does smell like other fragrances and so, a part of me is hoping that the uniqueness didn't stop here. This is a unique fragrance. I really enjoy wearing this one and it was so nice to revisit it two years after its release just to sort of see, do I still like this one? Do I still find it to be pleasant and unique? And it definitely ticks off all the boxes. So I'm gonna be wearing this one this season and I'm quite confident of that. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Valentino Uomo's Noir Absolute. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, please do consider subscribing. I would love you for that. All you need to do is click the red button in the corner and please make sure to click on that bell right next to the subscribe button to enable notifications. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.